was previously common throughout its range. Uh, the range, as you can see, is the shaded area in the lower left uh, photograph. And in the mid 90s, uh, it, uh, the researchers started noticing it wasn't uh, found during bumblebee surveys. And so it was petitioned to be listed. And in 2017, it was listed as endangered. And in 2019, a draft recovery plan was released. A little bit about the Rusty Patch Bumblebee. Um, bumblebee life history, uh, their, their colony or nest has an annual life cycle where a queen emerges in the spring and searches for a nest and collects resources to form, to, to grow that, that colony. And around midsummer, <clears throat> well, excuse me, she starts laying workers, which are all female. And at some point, the colony gets large enough where she does not leave the nest to go collect resources, but the workers do. And around midsummer, she changes from laying workers to males and females. And they, those emerge mate and the new mated gynes, which are, would be next year's queens, uh, find a place to hibernate uh, over winter and the rest of the colony uh, dies at frost or with limited resources. So Rusty Patch Bumblebee has been found in the Appalachian region, region and in West Virginia in the Appalachian Forest National Heritage Area. And so uh, from the recovery plan, some, some takeaways, we are in conservation unit four, which uh, to, to downlist would be a minimum populate number of populations in region four or conservation unit four would be 29. Criterion two to downlist a minimum number of healthy populations within each conservation unit and conservation unit that would be 14 populations. And then criterion three population clusters, which are one or two, two or more healthy populations adjacent to each other. And then the delisting criteria, which is the ultimate goal of species recovery would be that all the downlisting criteria are met and that mechanisms are in place to ensure the continued uh, achievement of that, the downlisting criteria and to the foreseeable future. So here's uh, the Fish and Wildlife's current Rusty Patch Bumblebee distribution map. You can see the shaded areas where the historic range and where they are currently being found. And I'm gonna zoom in in the Appalachian distribution area. And you can see that they are in our, more of our higher elevations along the Virginia, West Virginia border and into Western Maryland. Uh, this is another very, very interesting map by the Fish and Wildlife. Uh, all these are on their webpage, which I have uh, the, the link there at the bottom. Um, but the priority areas, so each one of these is a 10 by 10 kilometer uh, grid. And each one of these can be thought of as a population in the recovery. Um, and currently uh, we have 24. So for downlisting, our entire conservation unit would need 29. And currently we have 24 populations including this year's that is not shown on this map. Um, out of the 14 healthy populations, uh, we currently have eight, eight of these populations that have initial uh, data on their health uh, that has been recorded. And as far as the clusters, it looks like from my estimates, we have around four to five clusters. It, it kind of depends on um, if they're like this one right uh, in the middle, the larger purple is that one cluster, or they can they count that as multiple. So, the recovery efforts that I've been partaking in, uh, besides finding the new locations, um, are collecting 
the non uh, non lethal samples uh, that will go towards determine you know determining the overall health um, of our populations in our region and be able to compare those with the Midwest. Um, so I take DNA samples, which as you can see in the photographs, I take their mid leg tarsal segments, I uh, stick with the right leg. Um, and this is a, a bit of an invasive uh, procedure. However, however, ever, um, it's not as invasive as taking the whole, killing the whole bee. Um, but this year, this photo in the lower right um, was actually an individual that I had captured a week prior to, and I, I, I caught it a week late over a week later, and see that it does not have its mid leg tarsal segments. However, it has two large uh, balls of pollen, so it obviously is a non lethal. Um, technique, they do survive and they can continue to help the colony by collecting resources. And I have recently talked with a uh, USGS individual that's analyzing uh, this data and through the numbers we currently have, it seems like we can confidently compare the Appalachian Athenus to the Midwest Athenus populations. I also collect pollen. Uh, this pollen will help us determine what floor resources they're using. And by that, we can hopefully identify habitat um, to find new locations and then in the conservation, restoration, management of individuals. I take one pollen basket from, from each worker. And also pathogen samples. I have not uh, been unable to locate uh, SUD samples currently, but they're going to be very important moving forward to determine uh, parasite and disease and pesticide loads in the overall health of Athens. Um, so with that, part of uh, my efforts is, is basically kind of like helping others to develop their search image, being able to see these and find these and know that they're here. A big part of this is getting folks like yourselves aware of their, their presence, but also what they look like. And hopefully in the near future, uh, you too will be finding your own. So really quick, uh, Aphenis, uh, Bombus Aphenis has a short round face. Uh, the head and face are black. And there's a wing band, a uh, band between the wings, and it looks similar to a thumbtack. In, in most of those photos, you can see that they're uh, between the wings, looks similar to a thumbtack. And then the abdominal segments, the first two are yellow, and usually in workers and males, there is a rusty orange patch on, T, on the second abdominal segment and it is surrounded by yellow. Uh, some of the other bombus species that you might confuse Aphenis with, the bombus griseoculus, the brown belted bumblebee in the upper left. However, you can see that it does not, the, the second segment or the brown patch is not surrounded by yellow. And Bombus fagans, it does have one and uh, two uh, turga, one, the T1 and T2, the abdominal segments as yellow, but the face is not round. And then there is a male color pattern of Bombus citrinus that looks similar to Aphenis. However, it does not have a rusty patch. And another uh, bee that you might confuse with uh, Bombus aphenis is Xylocopa virginianus is the uh, carpenter bee. They, they do not, I do not have a photo of them, but they do not have any hair on their abdomen. They're very shiny and their behavior, if you have any wooden structures, decks, um, cabins, they are hovering around the outside of them and might zoom around you. That's not the behavior of a bumblebee. 
Um, so here's some more photos of Aphnis just trying to get your, your search image and what they kind of look like. The, the rusty patch uh, is not as, as prominent on some individuals as others. And look, depending on the angle you're looking at the bee, uh, it can change shape and color. Here's a video that I took of Aphnis in West Virginia. As you can see, the, the, the features that I've, I've described um, are visible. And obviously, I was able to take a video and several photos of Aphnis. So uh, even though this is an endangered species and netting is not allowed, in known zones, uh, photograph, a photograph will definitely, uh, is usually capable um, of doing. Here is another Mamas Aphanis on common milkweed. Both of these individuals I had, had captured and released and they landed on the flower and I was able to uh, video them. And that's why they, that behavior, they're both cleaning their wings and uh, just kind of getting ready from being captured. So when I find these uh, habitat identification, um, and so these are some photos, I'm gonna kind of get through this so we can, you know, might have some uh, questions, but usually early successional or woodland edges, roadside edges, and wetlands. This is the most current location that I've found them uh, with a, a lot of uh, Hello Joe pie weed. And here is a list I've been asked, what, what uh, are you finding Rusty Patch Bumblebee on? And in the last three years, uh, I've found them on these or someone has found them in the, in the Appalachian forest re region. Um, they are generalists, but it seems like they are having a preference to certain things, uh, but that's just, we're still in the works and we're tr still trying to figure out what, what and why they're still here, but they seem to be healthy that I see. Uh, and this year I have found uh, 25 currently and counting. Um, and is that a product of their overall health or I am out there, someone's out there actually looking for them and knows what to look for and key in on them. So it's pretty exciting to be uh, in our region. And like I said, uh, Athenis is within the Appalachian Forest National Heritage Area. And so there's a lot, that, lot, lot that can be done. So with that, I wanna thank you all again and I'll take any questions.